Hi Booktube and welcome to a new video. This is a tag video. This is the um, the Dilemmas of a Book Nerd tag uh, which is originated by Lindsay's Little Library but I was tagged by Cilia about three four weeks ago. Apologies it's taken me a while to get around to doing this. Um, so thank you Cilia and I'll post links to both of those assuming that uh, Lindsay's Little Library version is still up on Booktube. Uh, and on with the prompts. So prompt one, book storage. How do you store and organise your books? Okay, well, we have to go on a little tour here, so bear with me. Um, so those of you who follow my channel for a while know that I used to store all my books outside in the shed uh, due to lack of space at home. But um, I had a massive outbreak of, outbreak of mould and mildew, which destroyed, I don't know, a good 300 of my books. So uh, emergency uh, procedures were necessary, which included buying of two new bookcases, these two, um, and I've always had this, now those are my son's books, but underneath, since we're talking about organising, so these are all the, two, this is my to be read pile, pretty much, so these are in no particular order, um, I think this pile uh, includes some this pile includes some buddy reads. So Kent Haroof is a buddy, well no it's not a buddy read, it's for Jason at Old Blues Chapter and Verse. Uh, you Carry a Coffin uh, series uh, for December, it's the December read. Dante the Divine Comedy, um, Alan at um, Big Hard Books and Classics and I are trying to find time to read that. And I think Madeline um, also uh, wants to join in on that but whether we can find a date for the three of us I don't know. Fernando Pessoa, The Book of Disquiet is a four-way buddy read uh, between me, Celia, Elizabeth at Bookish North and I think it was Tina possibly um, but it's all got a bit quiet on that because I think all of us are showing a distinct lack of enthusiasm um, and the rest are books that I have bought this year over here we have the books that by choice would be my next reads so we've got Sable, the wings of uh, the wings the rings of Saturn, which i think will be my next read after the Welbeck, and nicholson baker an author i had read everything of and then um sort of you know didn't follow him after a couple of bad books and just out of interest really it's um i'm going to read that see where he's at clarice the spectre part of my task of reading uh all of her books by the end of this year that will definitely be read this year then uh, George Perrick Life a User's Manual and Driven by our own booktuber Dane Cobain I want to read that this year uh, here's sort of a few non-fiction uh, books and here Lurid and Cute so the reason that's there like that sort of propped up is that, that will be sent to the shed because it's not worth keeping in my um, shelves as a book that I have high regard for and I'll explain my bookshelves in a minute so the next time it stops raining and I go down to the shed that book will no longer be here um so before we go to my shelves just need a little detour for another part of my book storage this is uh, my bedroom this is the drawer by the side of my bed um these used to be sort of um my next reads but actually they're more sort of books that are in progress but have been put aside so The Infinite Jest, um, Wittgenstein's Mistress which is a reread um, I'm about 80 pages into that um, some uh, bookmarks Danny Smith which I bought right at the beginning of this year and still haven't got round to reading I must read that this year Samuel Beckett's trilogy. I've read the first one, Malloy. Malone Dies, I would like to read this year. And The um, Unnameable, I will read next year. And this is a book from Slovakia. Robert Gow, Naked Thoughts. It's an ARC, and I need to get to read that before the end of the year and review it. So, a bit of a hodgepodge in there. Okay, back to my actual shelves. So I've only got two shelves which represent, I don't know, about a fifth, if that, of all my books, with the rest down in the shed, having to take their chances with mildew and mould, I'm afraid. I mean, I have tried to treat the ceiling, but it's back again. So these are the ones I want to protect. So we have shelf, top shelf here is women's fiction. Some of my favourite 
women's fiction or at least books read recently. So, for example, so Freshwater is not one of my favourite books, but I read that this year. Do You Dream of Terror 2 um, by Temi O. Oh, I read this year. Oh, Stubborn Archivist, which actually really needs to go with Lurid and Cute because it was a terrible book. It's one of the worst reads of this year, so that will not live in this bookshelf for very much longer, I suspect, because it's already full and I'm going to need to constantly make make room for it. Then here we have a um, second uh, shelf of, of uh, women's fiction, and these are all unilaterally my favourites by women, except to leave Schiff out that, uh, <laughs> and Ghost Factory. Those two aren't, but Lost Children Archive, which will be my book of the year, The Idiot by Elif Batuman, Scarlett Thomas, one of my favourite women authors, Miriam Toes, which is my top ten last year, A Visit from the Goon Squad, uh, Ali Smith's uh, trilogy, all those seem to be quartet, etc, etc. And next shelf down we have uh, European writers. So Lauren Binet, Kevin Barry, Irish counts as European, uh, Matthias Ennard, Dasa Drinjic, which and uh, Annie Eno, obviously both of those could go on the women's shelf as much as the European shelf. That's sort of a spatial um, conundrum rather than a sort of how do we um, you know, Quelbeck there, and there will be another um, hardback to go when I've finished uh, Serotonin. Um, W.J. Sebold and Parekh, well, they're both going to get, uh, hopefully, um, other books by the same author next to them. So I'm really going to have to, you know, radically uh, revise how I store this shelf. I think Edouard Louis, uh, that can go down to the shed because I didn't enjoy it. Same with Chromos by um, Philippe Alfo. Anyway, so that's my European shelf. Next one down, British uh, authors. Um, Michel Faber, David Peace, Tom McCarthy, one of my favourite writers. But time for a new book, Tom. Uh, Tibor Fisher, Neil Bartlett, who writes some of my favourite books, etc. And then down here at the bottom is my sort of world fiction. Uh, again, these are only representative because I do have a lot more books outside in the shed. These are my favourites. Murakami, Guillaume Martel, David Grossman, who's probably lucky to be in there because I haven't enjoyed either of those two books. Um, Yuri Herrera, three books. Kirkov, which I read this year, Death of the Penguin, really enjoyed that. A couple of books in the Middle East, etc, etc. Oh, Hank Kang, of course. Um, oh, that's interesting. Uh... There's two Hank Kang books there, should they? No, there's three Hank Kang books there, but they're not in the right place because that should be there. OK. This top shelf of the other one is my sort of um, best of non-fiction. So books that I'll either reference, go back to kind of thing. Shock of the news about the best book I've got on modern art. Um, stuff on war. Male psychology, um, stuff on terrorism, Susan Sontag, and um, uh, then the, the Beastie Boys and Paul Morley. Nothing. They're sort of um, sort of nostalgia books for me. They're not. I'm never going to go back and read them in terms of reference. But they're both books on music. Okay, uh, on to sort of. British again, so uh, Plume by Will, w Will Wiles, Will Eaves's Murmur, Glitch by Lee Rourke, Perfidious Albion, Sam Byers. So they're all new books this year. Oh no, Murmur wasn't, but they're new books this year that I've read. The David Mitchell section, Rupert Thompson, Max Porter's Lanny, etc. Now here we come to American, uh, but the. <laughs> I suppose sort of slightly postmodern or experimental American. So we've got David Markson, we've got William Gaddis, John Barth, uh, Ronald Sukunik, Jonathan. Then we've got uh, Jonathan Leatham and uh, Joshua Cohen, House of Leeds, and then my Ben Marcus section, which also needs some more books. Please, Ben, please write another one. And then down here we come slightly more conventional American uh, authors: Don DeLillo. Uh, Dave Eggers, Jeffrey Eugenides, but then we have Jarrett Kobeck, who is, is not really what you'd call uh, conventional. And finally, just some more, even more conventional American authors down here. Um, Paul Beatty, George Sanders, Ben Lerner, uh, Percival Everett, I suppose, is a bit more postmodern. 
uh, Matthew Sharp, Jonathan Saffron Fryer. So that's it. Rather a long answer to prompt one, but the rest will not be as long, I can promise you. OK, prompt two. Tracking. How do you keep track of what you have read and what books you own? Well, I have a pretty good memory. So, for example, I've read 100 books this year so far, and I could name either the author or the title of the book of probably uh, 99 of them. And last year I read 105 books, and I could probably name even now 105, again, either author or or title of the book. So I do sort of retain a good knowledge of, of books, but like everyone else who asks this question, I'm really happy also to use the Goodreads section. Every book I, I've read goes into Goodreads, um, gets a, a rating, um, will probably get a review. Um, and also my, you know, the, the ones I want to read or I'm in, down there in my uh, to be read pile. Uh, three, borrow. Do you lend your books out? Well, I'm perfectly happy to, but I don't really associate with people who are into the sort of books I I read. I have lent two or three out to a work colleague of mine who uh, is leaving work soon, so uh, I need to make sure I get them back off her. But they're mainly sort of music and culture books rather than fiction. Um, d uh, four, buying. How do you buy or acquire your books? Well, I have to admit it's mainly Amazon. Uh, partly because of price, partly because a lot of them aren't available, they're out of print, particularly American books. Um, but, you know, for example, the Annie Erno latest book, um, I Remain in Darkness. I bought that from Fitzgeraldo, the publishers, because it wasn't priced any cheaper on, on Amazon. So I thought, oh, I'll get it straight from the publishers. I buy from book, uh, bookshops, both secondhand and new. So I don't really have a set pattern, but I, I will say the majority of books I get are through Amazon. Five, comments. How do you respond to the how do you read so much comment or similar comments? Well, believe it or not, no one ever makes that comment to me. I don't know if it's because of my age or because they know I'm a writer and I'm a prodigious reader. I, you know, no one has ever said that to me that I can remember, so I can't answer that. Dilemma six, next book. How do you pick your next read? Well, you've seen the to be read pile. Um, I'm very much a mood reader, so although there's four books there I outlined, including Parek and Sabled, when I finish this book, which I will finish tomorrow, I suspect, um, you know, chances are I will go to one of those, or I may go for something completely different, depending where where my mood is having read serotonin, you know. So, again, I, I, I can't really answer that definitively. Uh, seven, travel. How do you pick what books you bring on vacation with you? I don't go on vacation, I stay at home and write. Um, when I did used to go on holidays, I used to pack nine books big, you know, I, that I really wanted to get to, and I, I sort of hadn't found the time to read them at home with a working week and a writing around that. So, I, you know, I remember some Will Self's novels I took on holiday with me and read around a swimming pool, which is a sort of perverse setting to read Will Self, but there you go. I don't do that anymore. As I say, I don't travel. Eight, annotate. Do you write or highlight or mark your books in any way? Well, um, non-fiction I do. I do mark them up. Um, a fiction I tend not to accept. I will turn down the corner of a page I want to return to because of a quote on it or something. And I'll post a link to my dog ear tag, uh, which sort of goes into that into more detail. Nine, new or backlist. Which do you prefer, new releases or backlist books? Well... A good book is a good book, so I have no preference. I'm, you know, I'm not ideologically wedded to only reading my contemporary writers. Uh, you know, I'm perfectly happy to read Backlist. And in a way, I think I make more discoveries of unknown writers that are Backlist rather than contemporary. Because the nature of Booktube, for example, you're going to have some contemporary new releases covered, you know, whether I'm aware of them or not. Someone's going to review it and then I'm going to decide whether that sounds interesting to me or not. Whereas, of course, with a backlist, the chances of a particular book being reviewed are, you know, far less. Um, but I make much more interesting discoveries, I think, uh, therefore, of, of books in the backlist. Ten, sequels. Do you read books as they are released? Or wait for an entire series to be published before reading one book. Well, I don't read sequels, so no. OK, so there you have it. There's my answers to the dilemmas of a book nerd uh, tag prompts. Uh, thanks very much for the excuse for a bit more book porn to film books in, in bookshelves, which I think turn uh, most of us booktubers on. Um, so, till next time, thanks very much. <laughs>